Adrian Broner, unapologetically brash. I knocked his ass out. But talented. AB is about business. I love that hate. I don't need no hair. Don't tell. Once the bell rings, he's one of the most gifted fighters in the sport. Hate it or love it, I'm going to always be AB. I'm still AB, always balling. It's not quite March yet, but that doesn't mean the fun of college basketball has to wait. DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app, is giving all new players a chance to cash $100. New customers can bet $1 on any team to hit a three-point in any basketball game this week. If your team makes it rain, you cash $100. That's right. All it takes is one three-pointer being hit by your chosen team, and you can turn $1 into $100, just like that. This offer, it won't be around forever. So head to the App Store now. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and get in on all the action. And if basketball isn't for you, DraftKings Sportsbook has daily odds on hockey, soccer, and much more. DraftKings has paid over $7 billion to its customers since 2012, so they know a thing or two about big paydays. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code SMOKE to get your shots to turn $1 into $100 when you bet any team to hit a three-point in any basketball game this week. That's promo code SMOKE for new customers to get a shot at 100 to 1 odds on any basketball team to hit a three-point shot. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for more details. I remember shit in Golden State where you used to you used to bring that Louis backpack and you didn't give it, it smelled like you would just throw the weed in there. It didn't even smell like there was in a plastic bag. So this nigga Jack would walk through the whole plane and I'd see him walk through the uh where the media's at and they would kind of smell it and look at each other. Then he'd motherfucker walk through the coaching section and you know Nelly didn't give a fuck, but the rest of the coach would kind of look and then he'd get up to us and it's so loud. I'm sitting there like God damn, bro, did you just pour the weed inside your Louis bag or is it in a Ziploc? Like, what is it? But Jack used to carry around this brown Louis bag that just smelled like a dump sack. <laughs> I used to have my shit vacuum sealed or I'd have it in an extra baggie with the, uh, either coffee or fabric softener. Jack didn't give a fuck about disguising the smell at all. Jack's like, fuck it. I, ne- I negotiated my own contract on this team. I'm just going to walk on this bitch with weed in my pockets. I don't give a fuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's what you get when you let me play in California, man. Hey, We Believe documentary is in the works. Y'all be ready yeah. for that shit. It's going to be fun. A new week in the NBA, and this is what's burning. Uh, Jack, KD is scheduled to take the next two games off because of hamstring soreness or tightness thoughts about that yeah I mean you know KD worked hard to get back on this court man and you know I think it's, it's just his body catching up with him you know missing games for COVID and coming back you know he he's not in the full rhythm yet and the team is not in the full rhythm but they need to find a way to get guys healthy and get back you know get back in the swing of things and trying to gel a little bit more especially on defense so whatever moves they're gonna make they need to make them because it's, it's coming to crunch time and I think I think uh you know, Katie needs to get health and this team needs to start figuring things out. Well, I think you, you know, you hit it on the head. You know, normally coming back off a big injury like that, there's nagging things that are going to happen. Luckily, he's been able to avoid that. Um, obviously, he sat out with the contact tracing. Um, now, I just think this is a little precaution. I think, you know, early on, he was up in that near that 40 minute array, uh, a game range, which I kind of I personally think is too high for someone coming off an Achilles. Um you know, so they got to slow him down, rev him down a little bit and understand there's still more than half the season left, you know, and it, it's still a, it's still a marathon, not a sprint. Um, but as far as chemistry goes, it's tough. But at the same time, Katie's to me, someone that that comes in and just does his job, you know, so he's mm-hmm. someone you can slide right back in and you won't miss a beat. No I question. think this is an important time for Kyrie and James to continue to build chemistry, which I think they're doing. Um, which is probably the most important, and then tighten up on defense. And we all know defense is just energy and, and, and effort. So they've started to clean those two areas up. I think when KD gets back, um, you know, he'll step in right where he left off in, in, in the MVP conversation, and this team will get rolling. Next up, Anthony Davis aggravated his Achilles tendonitis uh, against Denver the other night. Um, this is a scary situation, Jack. You know, Achilles are obviously nothing to play with. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, man, it's, this is not nothing to play with at all. I mean, a lot of people are not talking about this injury started in the finals last year. 
You know, he hurt, he hurt the same Achilles last year, and he sat out a couple minutes. And uh, the way it looked, I didn't think he was going to come back and play, but he came back and finished and won the championship. Now the season has started again real fast, and they got playing all these games, and there's a lot of wear and tear on him. You know, he, he mm -hmm. plays a lot of minutes, and he does a lot for this team. So they got to be real cautious with this injury because if he goes down, this team is in trouble. Yeah, I think it's, you know, obviously the short turnaround, you know, similar to KD coming off an injury, but everything coming up so fast. You know, AD, like you said, injured it in the finals. We're creatures of habit. We're accustomed to having a certain amount of set time to let our bodies heal and then restart our engines and slowly but surely get the season going. It didn't happen this way. And um, I think Richard Jefferson was commentating the game and made a great point. You can feel absolutely fine, run, jump, slide, move around. But if you're bumped awkwardly, um, at any given time, that's all it takes to aggravate something. And obviously that's what he is. Um, you know, luckily they have Judy over there who was Kobe's right hand uh, woman and, uh, she's mm -hmm. full time with the Lakers now. So she's got some of the best hands in the game working on him. So I hope she can figure it out. But then another concern is, do you ramp bronze minutes up for the absence of Anthony Davis? Obviously he's a machine. He's been playing great. Um, but obviously there's a concern of, you know, is it too much too early? Uh, thoughts on his minutes possibly going up with the absence of AD? Well, I, the, it could be a good and a bad thing. But like you said, anything could happen on the court. If you look at LeBron's points, you know, the, the games AD been out, like the last five games, he's averaging like 28, 29 points. So um, it's, it's good to see the way he's playing, but you don't want that now. You want that in the end of the season. You want that in the playoffs. And they, they got to save some of that. But LeBron's playing well as long as he's healthy. You know, we, we we saying, how is he doing this stuff right now in year 17? Well, if he can do it all season, let him do it. Yeah, no, 18. It's, it's year 18. 18, 18, one, 18, year, excuse oh, me, yeah. 18. one year older. But like I said, he you know, he he he's the he's the driver of that car. So it's going to take everyone else stepping up. You know, this will be big. This is a chance for Montrez Harrell to get some increased minutes uh, and step his role up. He's been playing really well. And mm -hmm. we got the trade deadline looming. You know, this is, is this a move that, you know, the Lakers possibly at, look to add some depth on that front line? We'll have to look for that and monitor these two injuries of AD and KD closely, um, you know, over the next few weeks. Who's hot and who's not? Devin Booker and the Phoenix Suns are on fire, winning nine out of their last 11, six straight in the fourth spot, only two games out of third. Their defense is, has been flying around their fifth in the league. Devin Booker over the last eight or nine games is close to 27 points a game. Mm -hmm. Jack, at the very beginning when we started talking about this was going to be my surprise team to watch and I thought that CP3 once him and Devin Booker got their chemistry going, that CP3 was going to be the best thing that could have happened to Devin Booker and it kind of looks like I'm right. Thoughts on the Suns right now and how CP3 has got not only Devin Booker but those Suns playing on a whole nother level right now. Well, Devin Booker, man, we already knew what he could do. You know, uh, he, yeah, he been killing, man. And I, I, I can honestly say I said that when he was in Kentucky, but I didn't think he was going to be this good. But he's a killer, man. Uh, but Matt, you were right. You were right about this team. But CP may not have the championships like Tom Brady, but he is Tom Brady on the court. He gets he's a, he's a he's a winner. He's a winner. He makes everybody win. That's why so many teams wanted him through his career. He makes everybody win. He's a quarterback on that court. He does everything. He makes it so much easier for Booker. He makes it easier for Aiden. He makes it easier for Monty Williams to coach because he's Absolutely. able to get everybody in, in, in their positions and coach on the court while he's coaching on the sideline. So I got to salute uh, Chris Paul, man. I knew what he could do, but um, what he's doing right now with this team is amazing, bro. Yeah. I mean, I love to see it at this age, too, you know, where they, they said he was washed in, in Houston. That just wasn't a good fit. He went to OKC took them to the playoffs. Now he lands in Phoenix uh, with a young up-and-coming team. Monty Williams is, you know, a friend of his. They go back from New Orleans, and he's just an extension of Monty on the court. You know, Chris being one of the most clever minds, greatest basketball minds to, to this game's ever seen. Like I said, once he put his veteran leadership and his knowledge on this young team, it can only go up. And you see Devin Booker uh, benefiting from that. Andre Aiden, you know, CP has a great history of, of getting bigs paid and better. You know, he, mm -hmm. he did it with uh, Tyson Chandler. He did it with DeAndre Jordan. He did it with Clint Capella. And now Aiden, who could be the best out of all the, out, all four of the three men I just uh, mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. is really benefiting. So this is fun. I love to see what they're doing. Happy for Monty Williams. Happy for CP. Happy for Book, because Book's career has kind of just been on life support over there. But it looks like they right. have some real hope right there, and it's going to be fun to see what they can do uh, finishing out the season. It's not quite March yet, but that doesn't mean the fun of college basketball has to wait. DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app, 
is giving all new players a chance to win $100 cash. New customers can bet $1 on any team to hit a three-pointer in any basketball game this week. And if your team makes it rain, you cash $100. That's right. All it takes is one three-pointer being hit by your chosen team, and they could turn that $1 into $100. Just like that. Stack, who are some of the college teams you've been following this year? I've been watching a little bit of Alabama, a little bit of Michigan, a little bit of Gonzaga. They look real good. Those are all teams that shoot the three ball well, and that's what the game is about these days. So should be an easy win for you guys. This offer won't be around forever. So head to the App Store now. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and get in on all the action. And if basketball isn't for you, DraftKings Sportsbook has daily odds on hockey, soccer, and much more. DraftKings has paid out over $7 billion to its customers since 2012, so they know a little something about big paydays. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code SMOKE to get your shot to turn $1 into $100 when you bet on any team to hit a three-pointer in any basketball game this week. That's right. Promo code SMOKE for new customers to get a shot at 100-to-1 odds. Any basketball team to hit a three-point shot only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Next up, who's not hot? The Atlanta Hawks are ice cold, losing seven out of their last ten. They're in the middle of the pack in every important statistical category. And, Jack, I could just see this as growing pains. This was another team. This was my Phoenix Suns of the Eastern Conference. Obviously, they didn't grab CP3, but I thought this was a, a, a year for them to kind of break out and make a little bit of noise in the East. And they're struggling right now. Um, you know, so it's going to be important for someone to step up as that leader. Obviously, we know Rondo's over there, but Rondo's in and out of the lineup. They need someone who's going to consistently be playing to kind of take that leadership role uh, for that team. Uh, thoughts on this just this young team trying to find their identity and their footing? I mean, you're exactly right. You know, still got a, a young coach, a, a young team. They added a whole bunch of new players. You know, I, I didn't expect too much from this team, and it is growing pains. You know, maybe they're going to have to switch the lineup up, you know, like other teams been doing. Even Brooklyn did it. They moved Kyrie to the two and put James at the one. Start Rondo and let Trey play the two. He might be small. You might have some mm. de defensive, some defensive mismatches, but still, you know, it, it might change the flow of the game. You got to try some different things, but, but nobody really expects this team to be there at the end. So I think now is the time to start experimenting so these guys can grow yeah. and get up out of these growing pains. No, I agree. Like I said, I thought this was going to be the year that people remember, you know, that they kind of put themselves on the map as a team on the rise. I still think feel like they're, you know, two years, possibly three years are really from – making noise in the Eastern Conference. But I, I love what you're saying. You know, mix it up now. Now's the time to find that chemistry and that rhythm uh, with different lineups and experiments and guys in and out. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. You know, anytime you got Trey Young, you got a chance. You know, there's rumors of John Collins, which we'll uh, touch on later in the show. But I just think at the end of the day, this is growing pains and them trying to find who they are as a team. Someone who is definitely hot right now is scary Terry Rozier out there in Charlotte. Um, Jack, I like what this team is doing. Rozier in particular, you know, 27 points a game in the month of February. Um, he had to adjust his game with Gordon Hayward coming over, who's, you know, at about 23 points a game. Mello, who is, you know, my rookie of the year, I think he's just ignited that team. They seem like they have a new energetic surge. Their enthusiasm, their energy, their effort, all of it is off the charts. Looks like they're having fun. But Terry Rozier is, is something to take note of. This dude's killing of late. Well, you know, and, and he's and he's their best defender. But this is the thing, you know, coming in, like you said, they these guys had to figure each other out. Even the coach had to figure the lineup that works best. And for me, you get they they finally gave the ball to Lamelo. He's your point guard. Scary mm -hmm. Terry's your two guard. Mm -hmm. And uh, hey, what is your three guard? Now they now they're starting to figure out where they're gonna be, where their minutes gonna be, where roles they're gonna play. I think though with those three guys, they can make the playoffs in the East, maybe a fifth or sixth seed. But the way they play, they can keep it going. They're gonna be a scary team with Scary Terry. Yeah. With scary, Terry. Like I said, I love the energy. It, it seems like, you know, obviously there's some great pieces over there, but to me it, it, it kind of started when Melo was inserted in the starting lineup. And I think mm -hmm. the energy and the effort and just the fun of that team has taken off. So this is good. You know, it looks like Mike got, got one right there with LaMelo. Yeah. Uh, that's a great backcourt between LaMelo and uh, 
Lamelo and Terry Rozier. You know they got Miles Bridges, the, what, what they call them Airbnb. So yeah. they got some, they, they got some, they got some pieces over there, and it's just fun to watch this young team figure it out. Uh, you know, obviously with with Gordon being a vet and him kind of finding his footing, get happy for him. So you know, Charlotte is is in a good place right now, and uh, can definitely be a tough first round matchup for anybody they play. The week ahead, um, as Brooklyn's out on their West Coast swing, uh, they're heading to L.A. This week, uh, with two tough matchups, the Lakers and Clippers, um, you know, KD is supposed to be back for that Laker game on Thursday. Oddly enough, this will be, if KD plays, the first time that KD and LeBron have matched up since the 2018 finals um, yeah. with Golden State and Cleveland. So this will be fun and interesting. You know, with, with hamstrings and, and nagging injuries, they like to put numbers on them of games. But as players, we know it's all about feel. You know what I mean? So hopefully... Uh, within those two games or, you know, these two games he has off, he's starting to feel better. But, you know, I err on the side of caution. Um, AD is out now. Obviously, we spoke on that with his Achilles situation. These are two teams we can possibly see at the end um, missing key guys right now. What are, you th- what are your thoughts on this game coming up this Thursday, Jack? It's going to be exciting to see. I mean, you still got Kyrie Irving, Swerving mm-hmm. Irving, and you still, and you still got mm-hmm. James Harden. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So the killer. So I mean, uh, it's it's still gonna be interesting. But both of these teams need to get a hold of these injuries, nip them in the bud, get these guys healthy, so they can take off running the uh, second half of the season. And that's what they really need to focus on. Yeah, these games mean a lot, and these matchups mean a lot, and these wins mean a lot right now. But health is mo- is the most important thing for both of these teams. Absolutely. But I think you go back to the luxury of having three superstars on one team. You know, obviously KD is a huge part of this team and moving forward, they're going to need him healthy. But, you know, when KD goes down, you still forget you have the luxury of having Kyrie, who's one of the best players in the world, and James Harden. You know, obviously Mm -hmm. when AD goes down with the Lakers, that's a big hit because it's just LeBron. And obviously, you know, they have a very solid team built around them, but they only have two stars there. So it'll be interesting to see um, if KD's back. We don't expect AD to play. Um... But like I said, I'm just excited because at the end of the day, there's still a lot of talent on that floor, and it's, it's going to be a great Thursday night game. So they got the Lakers Thursday night. Sunday is the Clippers. Uh, we got a great game a few weeks ago in Brooklyn where they were able to uh, beat the Clippers, but that was a special game that went down to the wire. I'm excited about this game Sunday because there's so much star power in this game. You know, hoping that the Brooklyn has all three of their stars. Uh, the Clippers are playing really well right now. This should be a fun matchup. You know, there's great matchups across the board in this game. Yeah, these are teams we want to see play, and and these teams bring the best side of each other. If you remember last game in Brooklyn, as you spoke of, we see James get down and make a stop at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Guarded Kawhi, made Kawhi take mm-hmm. a tough shot. Yep. Kyrie was unbelievable in that fourth quarter. What he's known to do, take over games. And nobody couldn't stop KD. KD was just an easy sniper, you know, getting his points easy during the whole game. But seeing this seeing round two, I think the Clippers going to be more inspired to get this dub at home. It's going to be another good game for us to watch. I ain't going to miss it. I like where the Clippers are sitting. Um, you know, I said last year, being a former Clipper, there was too much hype on the Clippers. They're not used to hearing championship. You know what I mean? We mm-hmm. got to take baby steps. And I say we, obviously, you know, because I was a part of their uh, organization. But I like where they're sitting. You know, they're in the third spot right now. Utah's making a lot of headlines with the best record in the league. The Lakers are the Lakers. But the Clippers are consistently playing good basketball right now. They, they got their mm-hmm. chemistry down. Uh, Ty Lue's got those guys playing at the top of their game. So this is going to be a great matchup on Sunday. Um, like we saw a great one in Brooklyn. I expect the one in L.A. to be nothing uh, nothing less than great. And I'm excited about the game. So we'll have to check that out on Sunday. Continuing the look ahead, Utah is headed to Hollywood this week, Jack, with two big matchups against the Clippers. Uh, man, Utah's been playing their asses off. Salute to Quinn Snyder, Donovan Mitchell. And we both said it when Shaq did what he did a few weeks ago. Some people took it as disrespect, hate, whatever. But we both thought it would be motivation. And since then, uh, Donovan Mitchell has been on fire. His team has been on fire, shooting, uh, shooting a three ball at a record pace. Um, defense is number two in the league. Offense is number four in the league. And this guy's chemistry is, is really clicking. You know, like I said, we've said it before. To me, they just remind me so much of those San Antonio Spurs teams, obviously minus a Tim Duncan figure, but just the situation and, and, and the way these guys gel and play together. Um, you think they can come out here and get two against the Clippers? Man, I don't know. But these are the games that they should have circled on their calendar. Lakers, Clippers, Brooklyn, all the top teams. Yeah, y'all rolling right now. Y'all getting up to the best start of anybody in the league right now. And that's good. Y'all putting yourselves in great position. But 
it does not matter if you can't beat these teams and you can't compete with these teams comes the end of the season. So these are the mm-hmm. measurement games for them. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to downplay the, the great start. They be having uh, kudos to Coach Schneider. But these games against the Lakers, Clippers, teams like that, these are the games that they really got to circle and buckle down because this this they test. This is going to be the, to tell where, they, where they're going to be at the end of the season. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, it's all about the playoffs. Um, this team has been steady throughout the regular season for the past few years and, and stumbled in the playoffs. And, and people kind of, you know, some people agree, but some people look at me crazy. It's like, you know, does Utah make a play before the trade deadline? You know, obviously their chemistry is great, and no, normally you don't want to mess that up. But although they're playing this well, I still feel like they're, they're they're missing that piece. And that's with all due respect to everyone who's playing well on that team. I just kind of still feel like – they're missing that piece. I hope they prove me wrong, but this will be a great test. Um, getting a you know two games in a row um, against the Clippers in LA. You know someone that we that we figure will be there uh, come playoff time in, in the Clippers. So this is going to be a great matchup and really a good measuring stick. But you know Utah is the hottest team in the league right now, and it's they're fun to watch. With the trade deadline looming, there's definitely some people who are being talked about a lot, and we'll start with Zach Levine, someone who's having an absolute career season, 28 points a game. 51% from the field, 40 from the three, 86 from the line. So he's flirting with that 50, 40, 90. Uh, his team is on the outside looking in. Jack, is Levine someone they're going to build around, or is he someone they're going to be able to trade and get a lot of good assets for to build around their younger core? Well, I don't think the Bulls know what they're doing. I think we need to probably <laughs> give them some ideas. They don't know what they're doing. And if I was Zach, I would trade the Bulls. I wouldn't let them trade me. I would trade them. Uh, he's having a hell of a year, Matt, I'm, a career year. I think he needs to be somewhere where he can help and contend for a championship, man. This kid doesn't need to be wasting his years in the, with the Bulls because they have no idea what they're doing over there. And hopefully he can get somewhere where, where they appreciate his talents because this kid is something special. Shit, I can't even say nothing. I mean, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm happy to see how well he's playing, but would love to see him help a contender. You know, he's never really had a real opportunity to play on a winning team or for a winning franchise at this point. Um, so that now he's at the top of his game. I'd love to see it. Next up, Bradley Beal, who's leading the league at nearly 33 points a game. Team isn't going anywhere. Obviously, his name has been thrown around with a few teams. Utah, as we mentioned earlier, Denver. But why, like, like we continue to say, he's always going to say and do the right thing. So publicly, he's saying he wants to be a wizard. Um, but the wizards really aren't going anywhere. So do they try to trade him? Because obviously right now you'll be able to get a lot for him. Or, you know, do they ride out this storm and, you know, he continues to put up amazing numbers on a terrible team? Yeah, well, we know he can fit in anywhere. He's super special. It just it really depends on where, you know, that they, 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 they're trying to trade him to. And uh, where you know what what options he has as far as as winning or losing because he can easily get traded to a team where he's in the same situation he's in in Washington. So <laughs> right. you know I, I I understand what he's doing. I'm not gonna burn my bridges. You know what I mean and say I want to get out of here and go to somewhere worse. You know I've been here. My family's here. You know right. I, I'm, I'm I've been here my whole career. So you know I just really just see how things will play out and continue to do my job. And that's what he's doing, man. He's he's definitely the best player, uh, having the best season of any player in the league right now. Yeah, I mean, a consummate pro, someone who does the right thing on and off the court. Um, so as far as far as just what his individually achievement, I love to see it, but I know it's got to be frustrating. You know, his wife tweeted out some a few weeks ago that they're tired of it. So although they're saying everything right publicly, um, who knows what's going on behind the scenes? But like I said, I would love to see him get in a situation where he could really contend for a title. The Hawks have a big decision. Uh, you know, there's talks about trading John Collins um, to me, which doesn't seem smart. Um, he's at 18 points, nearly eight rebounds, 54% from the field. Obviously, his numbers are a little down now because they've added some frontline depth in Capella and a few other guys. Uh, Jack, do they pay him or do they trade him and get some assets for him? I think they're asking for a lottery pick for him. So thoughts on John Collins? You won't get a lottery pick for him. Sorry. But one thing I like is that the Hawks are not pulling the auto porter. They're just not going to throw somebody $100 million. <laughs> Thank you for, 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 for appreciating your hard-earned money, the Atlanta Hawks. Because look at this. Like you just said, Matt, they got Capella. They can they can get rid of him and get some more pieces. And then, too, let's be honest, his game is limited. He's a great athlete, but he only can do so much out there. And him and Trey do have a great chemistry, but you have Capella who does more on the court. So he's definitely expendable, and they can get something for him. But I'm glad they didn't pay him because that would have been a big mistake. But I want all these young men to get their money. But in Atlanta, nah, y'all trying to win. Y'all got to go. Y'all got to use that money somewhere else. Mm, so you think trade him before the deadline and get some assets? 
Yes. Yeah. All right, we're going to have to wait and see. I mean, that's that's where you're at. That's where you lay your head. You know that team pretty well. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of moves they make with him. Like I said, I think he's a young, up-and-coming talent. Um, game hasn't fully developed yet, but he's still young. You know, so he's got mm-hmm. some time. So we're going to have to wait to see what they do with him. Are they going to pay him? Or are they going to get some pieces for him before the trade deadline? Someone else who there's talks around is Kevin Love. He's only played two games this season, uh, but hasn't played more than 60 games since the 2017 season. Healthy, he's definitely someone who can help a contender, uh, but he hasn't seemed to be healthy. Then I don't know if that's just not wanting to play in Cleveland. They paid him that big bread since LeBron's left. That team's been in the shithole. Um, so is he just saving his legs for someone to come save him? Or are these injuries starting to catch up with him? And then also Andre Drummond. The Cavs have decided not to play him anymore until they can find a trade uh, partner. So they got two highly paid pieces sitting on that bench, what do they do with them, Jack? Well, is anybody in the NBA LL Cool J? Because he's the only one I know need love. Kevin Love ain't played <laughs> now I don't know how long. You know, okay, we, I've, I've seen, we played, and I've seen Kevin Love give Blake Griffin 40 points and uh, 25 rebounds. So I've, I've, I've seen that. But he's not that Kevin no more, and he hasn't been playing it. I don't think, you know, nobody wants to take on that big contract for a guy that they don't know if he's going to be healthy or not. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm a big-time Kevin Love fan. He hasn't played, but I just don't I just don't see a team breaking their back to pick up Kevin Love. Drummond, he's an energy guy. He can he, he has to find out where he's going to play his role at. You're not a star, okay? You're not, you're not a go-to guy, and they're not going to drop the ball down to you uh, 15, 20 times a game, Drummond. You're a great athlete. You need to start watching uh, 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 DJ with Brooklyn, how he plays. He rebounds, he catches lives, and he's an energy guy. I think once he comes into that role and realizes he's not a drop-down guy like Embiid, I think he'll start coming into his own as a player. Somebody has to bring him down to reality. No, I think that's a great point. I know, do you risk picking up Kevin Love with his, you know, his injury record? And then two, Drummond. I think it starts back in the summertime because I like Drummond, but everything I see of him in the summer, he's trying to play point guard and, 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 and doing that. But that's not what he's really going to play in the summer. And, and that's why I get, uh, you know, I think with some of these guys in the summertime, like work on, know your role, work on what right. you're going to do in the game. Like you're seven feet, you're never going to be, and this is not hating on him or, we love to see everyone expand their game, but it's just not game like, as Rico Hines would say, like, know your big picture, know your role. You right. know what I mean? Work on things you know you're going to get to do in the game. And I think DeAndre Jordan is a great example. And I'll tell you a funny story. I talked to DJ about that because when he started getting a little bit better with the Clippers, he wanted more touches. And the way I broke it down to him was like, look at Tyson Chandler in New York. All he does is grab rebounds block shots, catch lobs, and he's an all-star, he's on the Olympic team, and he gets paid well. And you're a better athlete than him. You know what I mean? Go take that to heart and do what you got to do. So someone needs to have a heart-to-heart with Drummond because there is a lot of talent there, but I think he has to focus it and tunnel it on what is actually going to happen in the game and not thinking that he's a guard or someone that's going to get a lot of touches. You got to be able to find your work with inside the game. But like I said, two highly paid pieces sitting on that Cleveland bench. It'll be interesting to see what happens with both of them come trade deadline. All right, back with one of our favorite segments, fan questions. Jack, let's get to it. First up, Smokey Bale. If the league was planning to expand, what cities would you like to see an NBA franchise started in? Uh, Me, I would just go back to the two cities I'm familiar in. Seattle and Vancouver. Mm. I, 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 I enjoy both of them cities. Wait, we legal in both those cities. I was How about to say go they wrong? got gr- they got great tree in both those cities. Uh, I love Seattle. Uh, we got a chance to play there with the Warriors. I think was, was that Katie's rookie year. That was like mm. right before they moved. Yeah. Um, love Seattle. Never got a chance to go to Vancouver, but I heard a lot of great things. But I, I completely agree with you. If they were going to pick up two cities, those are the two cities I pick up right there. That's an easy call. Fan question number two: Michael M. Villa. Do you think the Spurs can get into the postseason or the play-in tournament in the tough Western Conference? I do. I think they're sitting in six right now in the West. Um, you know, I think getting in, they should be able to do that. You never want to underestimate a pop team. I don't see them really making noise once they get in. But I just love the way they got DeJounte Murray playing. Obviously, DeMar DeRozan is doing what he do. But those two have been playing extremely well this year. And, you know, they're a team that no one's talking about sitting at six. So, like I said, you know, hats off to Pop and what they've been able to do. But if they get in, I don't really see them making much noise outside the first round. Next question from Stanky Danky 24 underscore 7. Why is Giannis not getting any MVP love in the conversation this year? It's all LeBron, Jokic, 
Embiid and KD? Well, because I think a lot of people have seen think he's reached his ceiling. You know, people want to see him get to that championship. People want to see him be a champ, raise that trophy and get to the next level. And he hasn't. We've seen so many players that's regular season players come 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 through the league, you know, and they get their accolades, but they never they never become champions. Yeah, he's been the MVP. But now people are like, okay, yeah, you're good, but we want to see the next level. We haven't seen that. So there's no need for him to be in the MVP conversation no more. I mean, I completely agree. I mean, obviously, you know, we debated on this on the jump a lot where, you know, the MVP is based off just the regular season. But I think people are starting to smarten up. To me, you can't be an MVP if in the playoffs down the stretch I can't go to you for a bucket. Like, name right. another MVP in the history of the game where he's not the go-to guy or at least 1A you know, with Shaq and Kobe, it's a little different. But outside of those two, how can you not be able to go to the MVP down the stretch to get you a bucket when the game is on the line? And, and unfortunately, Giannis hasn't developed that side of his game now. Now, he's one of the most scariest players we've seen in the history of the game in transition yes. with the ball in his hands attacking the rim. There's no doubt about that. But we all know with playoffs, game-by-game -game adjustments, shutting that paint down, once you shut that paint down, you really slow him down and you force everyone else to do stuff they're not necessarily accustomed to doing, which is stepping into that leader role as far as the leading scorer. So I – I don't have a problem with him not being discussed as the MVP because, you know, he's one of the great talents in the league, but he's not the best player in the game to me, and he's not someone you can go to down the stretch in the playoffs. And to me, that's what the MVP is, someone that can take his team at least to the conference finals, if not the finals. Especially with KD back. Mm, especially with KD back. Next fan question. Sports W underscore Chris. How important do you think a good veteran is to a team's success? This is a great question. And it's unfortunate because they don't have vets no more. The, the league continues to get younger and younger. When we first came in, there was always, always vets on every team. Those guys yeah. are around 35, 36, you know, played 14, 15 years. Now, whether they're still getting minutes or not, they're very important to the development of the young players, important to the team staying on track and just all around good guys. And, you know, there's still guys out there that could be that, you know, Jamal Crawford's and, 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 and you know, guys like that. But they're just not getting a chance anymore because the league is so young. So I think it's unfortunate that they don't have real vets on the teams anymore that, you know, help, you know, bridge the gap uh, with new players and just kind of keeping the team as a whole on, in focus. Last question from Proof underscore Greg. Funniest non-basketball story you've had while traveling with your team, pro it's just pro for you because you never went to college. So it says pro or college. Well, uh, I got to – well, it should, it, it's funny to me. Uh, <laughs> it's funny to me. <laughs> uh, I remember when I was in Charlotte, man, when we had, uh, had a game and we had to leave that night to go on the West Coast. And you know how long that flight is. And I got out the locker room late. So, you know, I like to smoke before I get on the plane. You know what I'm saying? Smoke, we wanted to. You know, so matter of fact, I'm, I'm, matter of fact, man, we was on the road for getting ready to go West Coast. And um, as we as, I, as we get as we take the bus to the airport, we about to get off, and I'm geeking. So I'm like, man, what can I do, bro? I went in the bathroom on the bus, Ooh. lit up, took Ooh. my four look, took my four five pulls, Ooh. and I walked out right. And, and as I walked out, you know, the bus driver always, <laughs> always is off the bus helping, you know, with the bags and stuff, getting the bags on the plane. So as I get off, I'm walking up the steps on the plane. I look back, and I see him coming out the bathroom. Bro, he is so mad, dog. He is mm. so mad. But look, at least he was high. I, he got a contact. I was high for the rest of my flight. You know what I mean? And that's one of my crazy hey. stories, man. And hey, that's a win. I remember shit in Golden State where you used to you used to bring that Louis backpack, and you didn't give – it smelled like you would just throw the weed in there. It didn't even smell like there was in a plastic bag. So this nigga Jack would walk through the whole plane, and I'd see him walk through the uh, – <laughs> where the media's at, and they would kind of smell it and look at each other. Then this motherfucker would walk through the coaching section, and you know Nelly didn't give a fuck, but the rest of the coaches would kind of look, and then he'd get up to us, and it's so loud. I'm sitting there like, God damn, bro, did you just pour the weed inside your Louis bag, or is it in a Ziploc? Like, what is it? But Jack used to carry around this brown Louis bag that just smelled like a dump sack. <laughs> I used to have my shit vacuum sealed or I'd have it in an extra baggie with the, uh, either uh, coffee or fabric uh, softener. Jack didn't give a fuck about disguising the smell at all. Jack's like, fuck it. I, ne I negotiated my own contract on this team. I'm just going to walk on this bitch with weed in my pockets. I don't give a fuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
That's what you get when you let me play in California, man. Hey, we believe documentary is in the works. Y'all be ready <laughs> yeah. for that shit. It's going to be fun. What's burning quick hitters? Uh, the Portland supporting cast has really stepped up since Nurkic and CJ McCollum went down. Headed by Carmelo Anthony. He's at about nearly 19 points a game over the last seven or eight games. We spoke about it a few weeks ago. He passed Oscar Robinson for 12th all time. Jack, are you surprised by what Melo's doing? I know I'm not. Not at all, man. We knew what he could do. Uh, he's still driving by guys, still dunking. Melo loves to play basketball. Mm -hmm. And and not too many people work harder in the offseason, so I'm not surprised. He's going. He's a future Hall of Famer. Like you said, he, he's, he's continuing to get better. I'm not surprised with Melo at all. Keep it. Keep in mind, he's only 225 points away from passing Akeem Olajuwon in the 11th spot. This dude is going to be a top 10 scorer of all time by the time it's said and done, I think, and i uh, just love to see it. Um, next up, Cantor. Stepped up huge for Nurkic. Been a double-double machine, nearly at 13 rebounds a game. I love what his toughness brings to that team. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a big part of his game. He don't back down from nobody. You see the other day he took an elbow and was licking the blood off his face. He an animal, man. <laughs> you know, and he, he, he come from a rough background, so, you know, he mm -hmm. shouldn't be afraid of anything. He's going out there. He's, he's demanding uh, his, his presence in the paint, and that's something they need right, right now with guys down. So he's playing well for them. Definitely. Uh, Gary Trent Jr., someone who played really well in the playoffs, struggled at the beginning of the season, but is at nearly 20 points a game over the last 11, uh, stepping in for C.J. McCollum. I love when guys you don't, anticipate doing well, just kind of step up and do their thing. And he's definitely someone that plays on both ends of the ball, shoots the shit out of the three ball and plays defense. Yeah. Well, the two guys we talking about are both fearless guys. You know, look at, we talking about Gary Trent Jr. His dad was a fearless guy, a guy that Hell everybody yeah. respected. So he, mm -hmm. he has that same DNA. So both of these guys are tough guys that they need right now with guys down. And when they get to add those stars back, this team can, re can, be, can really make some noise in the West. You know, this is something that no one ever talks about, but Portland just has terrible luck with injuries because, like, mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about their supporting cast who's stepping up and playing well for guys that are very talented, obviously, with Nurkic and, and C.J. McCollum. And if they can ever just all stay healthy at the same time, they have one of the most talented rosters in the NBA. So we hope both these guys can come back healthy and these guys that have stepped up in their absence continue in their good play. Mark Cuban and the Dallas Mavericks make a statement last week saying that they will not play the uh, anthem before the games. The NBA stepped in and put that fire out. Um, I love what Cuban was thinking because if you know the history of the song, the anthem is some bullshit. Uh, but the NBA stepped in. Jack, thoughts on that? Shout out to Mark Cuban, man. And, Absolutely. And I, I appreciate him for having the guts to do it and, and, and be a leader. But he said a key thing that nobody's saying. I, I, I talked to my community. He talked to his community before he made that decision. And nobody stands behind that. This is not the right. land of the free. You know, this is right. not the land of the free. You know, nobody, and, and a lot of people don't stand behind that national anthem. I just salute him for, for jumping out there, you know, and, 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 and listening to the people around him, the people he worked with, the people that support him, and let, and let everybody uh, have a say so on that decision. Mark Cuban's always been on the front lines and always been awoke when it comes to social issues. So I definitely respect his movement and what he's about and the efforts he had to, like you said, listen to his community. But, you know, the NBA thought otherwise, but definitely salute to Mark Cuban for thinking outside the box and really caring about what people around him think. In the midst of Black History Month, Jack, I know we both watched uh, Black Messiah uh, this weekend. Shout out to uh, Shaka King and my brother Ryan Kluger for a beautiful film. Thoughts on that film? Because I watched that shit last night and it had my fist clenched the whole time. Hey, man, shout out to them brothers, man. A film that definitely uh, was needed. The next film, I need a role in it. Um, but <laughs> but I think, Matt, I, I want to just start that whole movie over and watch it again. You know, especially with everything that, that, I, that transpired in my life the last year, you know, and, and me meeting people, you know, that, 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 that lived their life similar to Fred Hampton. Hampton with my uh, with my friend Zeke in Detroit. So I think just the story being told, how they was treated, how they stood, you know, and 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 the connections, how he brought everybody together, all mm. this stuff needed to be all this stuff needed to be told, man. And and I'm glad I was educated in it. And it, it was more motivation for me to mm. see the things I've been doing and know I'm a lot of things that I'm doing, I'm doing it like some of the greats, and I'm doing I'm doing it in the in the right way, man. This was good to see for me. It was refreshing. Yeah, it was beautiful to see this story told. Obviously, they've been trying to hide this story for years. Uh, to think that Fred Hampton was only 21 when he was executed, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> assassinated. 
Um, but the Rainbow Coalition, you know what I mean? He took a lot of chances in going into areas that normal people wouldn't go in to bring people together. It didn't matter your color. And that's what I loved, and I think that's what they fear. Um, I hope this th this film gets the critical acclaim it deserves because most of the times when you highlight the, the bullshit the cops have been on, they usually try to sweep your movie to the back. But this movie was definitely a statement. It was a message. It's something that everyone needs to be seen. And it just, you know, it, it confirmed on, you know, policing was built on racism. And we're still, you know, that, that, that film took place in, I think, 1968, if I'm not mistaken, was the time period they captured that. And here we are in 2021 with the same kind of bullshit still going on. So I love that this kind of stuff is being brought to light. We need to educate ourselves on this. You know, something else that I thought was crazy and it's kind of a side note. I think in Utah, parents were allowed to Opt take out. their kids out of black history. And that shit just tripped me out because are we allowed to be taken out of the white history they lie, that they, they lie to us about, but they're giving parents in Utah the option for their children to opt out of black history, which is crazy. So I love the fact that they're finally starting to teach black history, but it just shows what kind of country you're in where the, the, a school is going to give parents the option to not let their kids learn black history but they don't give us the option not to learn the bullshit they're trying to teach us so i think we've come far but we still have a long way to go and this is just a beautiful film again big shout out to shaka king and ryan coogler uh, on a great film i hope it gets the the praise and eyeballs and recognition it deserves because it's something that needs to be shown it needs to be told and they did a great job of doing that and everybody that loved this film especially us the people we got to support it because like matt said a lot of times they try to overshadow or try to hide stories like this and try to hide the truth. But if we can continue to support these people and change the narrative and stand up for movies like this, then we'll continue to learn the truth. That's a wrap for this week. What's Burning can be found every Monday on Showtime Basketball YouTube. And on Twitter at Show Basketball. You did. Apologetically brash. I knocked his ass out. But talented. AB is about business. I love that hate. I don't need no hair. Don't tell Once the bell rings, he's one of the most gifted fighters in the sport. Hate it or love it, I'm gonna always be AB. I want it all what they saying. I'm still AB, always balling.